we can express to you. Words seem to be inadequate to express how much we love you, how grateful we are for all that you are and all that you do. But we can't say thank you enough. We can't lift up your name enough. So Lord, help us to learn what it means to really worship you in spirit and in truth. To abandon those things that keep us bound. So that worship you, we worship you with our whole hearts, with our whole minds. Now God, breathe on your word. Allow our hearts to be open to hear. For our minds to be renewed. For our lives to be transformed so that we will not leave here the same way in which we can. Do it, Jesus. Do it, Jesus. In Jesus' name. Amen. My heart is
But we don't often even look in the eyes of the person we're speaking to. Mm -hmm. Amen. 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 Bert Bacharach wrote it well. What the world needs now is love. Amen. That 50-year-old song, yep, 50-year-old song, amen, amen, reminds us that the world needed it then and the world needs it now. Amen. And when they come to the place where love should be the most present, we must make sure they find it. Amen. Amen. Not only when visitors time comes, but a love spirit should permeate this space. Yes. Yes. We call the worship space. Yes. Every conversation, every greeting should exhibit love. Yes. What we say under our breath that the person next to us and the person behind us hears is not always love. Mm -hmm. Amen, somebody. Yes. Amen. If someone has been away and they come back, greet them with love. Amen. Not a shady remark about their absence. Come on. Hey. Amen, church. Amen. Come on. Just love on them yes. and be glad that they're here. Yes. At the beginning of the conference year, as we worked on our vision statement, we concluded that the why of this church is love. Love for God, love for others, and for ourselves. Well, church, how are we doing? Some eight months later. Are we loving and showing love? Or are we still content with people? For the least. Are we giving food but never looking in their eyes? Are we down, are we down to, to programs but failing to consider their complete plight? Trinity wrote a song long ago that said this, I want to know what love is. Yes, yes. I want you to show me. Yes, yes. To show is a verb. And like those of you who heard Wild Wednesday this week, it's a verb. It requires Action. I meant to bring one this morning, but in my haste I forgot it. But consider in your mind's eye what a wreath looks like. It is a circle. And wherever it begins, there is no break in its flow. God's love for us, our love for God, and our love for others forms a circle. This circle is complete when we love God, when we love others, when we love ourselves. But when we fail to love, we render the circle fragmented and disjointed. Even when we look at the reef, it's not a smooth circle, right? Because love is never easy. Yet we must love when it is uncomfortable. Even when it hurts, we must love even when we don't want to. Anybody ever had a situation like that where you didn't want to love, but God kept pulling at you? We got to love when we don't want to. Because God is love. And if we are to stay in good vertical relationship with God, and good horizontal relationship with one another, we must join the circle Amen. of love. Amen. 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 If you don't get anything else out of this little message today, get that. Amen. The vertical and the horizontal becomes a circle. And it is non-ending. It flows from God to Jesus to us, from us to God to Jesus to us. It is a flow. And whenever we choose not to love others, we break the circle. The text tells us today, this is John's letter. John, same John that is the gospel according to John. This is 1 John and another 
pericope that he writes, and then we got Revelation, and that is his uh, writing of his vision. But in 1 John 4, he tells us, first of all, that God is the source of love. I remember growing up, my, my family used to always say, whenever you saw someone do something, and you wondered why they did it, they'd say, follow them home. Because yeah. apples don't fall too far from the tree. Oh, yeah. Amen. Because at, in the home, in the family, in the DNA, are some foundational, fundamental characteristics. If mama was me, we got to work hard not to be mean. Yeah. Yeah. Amen. Amen. It's like prego. It's in there. I tell people all the time, I, I'm from Detroit, and I try to stay from Detroit. But if you put it to our <laughs> Detroit will show up. Amen. That's why we have to be careful in choosing mates and folks to have children with. Amen, somebody. I know for many of us that time has passed, but for some of us and those listening, you may still be coming to that place. Yeah. Amen. Check out the family tree. Yeah. Stuff skips generations. Yeah. And there's an age-old fight about environment and innate characteristics. While it is true that some actions are the result of one's environment, some stuff is in the DNA. Oh. Amen. Amen. And I promised my mama tried to whoop every bit of my daddy and her issues out of me. Amen. Amen. You're not going to be like that. <laughs> and she was somewhat successful. Somewhat. But at the core of us are values and traits. And no matter our biological family issues, God's love transcends all those issues if we let it. God's love will push us past the trauma if we let it. By giving us the courage to face it. Don't you know we can't get rid of what we do not face? I'm convinced that some of us enjoy our place of pain. It's kind of like the story about the dog on the nail. The dog had fallen on the nail on the porch. And the owner kept saying, get up so I can make sure you're okay. See what the wound is. But the dog knew what the pain of the nail felt like. And the dog was afraid that getting off the nail would prevent more pain. So the dog would not get off the nail, and the owner had to literally pick up the dog, move the dog, so the dog could be healed. Don't you know that a whole lot of us are living laying on the nail? Living every day, living on the nail, because we're afraid that if we get off of the nail, the pain of getting off the nail is going to be worse than what we've gotten used to. Let me tell you, God is waiting to lift you up off of that nail so that you can be healed. God gives us the courage to face it. Reminds us that no matter how ugly our past is, God's love sees us beautiful. Aren't you glad God's love sees you beautiful? God is love, and love is foundational. God is the source of love, like the center of a circle. And when you get to the center of the circle, every point from the center is the same. Am I right about the mathematician? And there's the same distance. It's the same uh, a distance from each of us. For love uh, for others is connected to God's love for us. The closer we are to God, the more we experience his love, and the more we can share that love with others. And just as the circle has no beginning or no end, we point to something that began, but when you look at the circle, there's no beginning, no end. God's love has no limits or boundaries. It's never ending, never failing, no matter our infractions. Stop holding your 
run fractions over your head and ask God for forgiveness and keep it moving. Amen. Because God's love is greater than our sin. Some people think that God's love for them is tied to their behavior. Here's the news flash, and don't miss it. God loves you because of you, in spite of you, and God loves you for you. Because sometimes we can't figure it out, so God loves us for us until we can get there. Amen. Yes, repentance is the gateway to restored relationship, but God's love is not contingent on our actions or our sinfulness. Stop looking at people's lives and deciding why stuff happens to them. And deciding that God somehow loves you more because you have more, have done more, have received more. Not so. Maybe God wants you to love them with what God has blessed you with. Hmm. Come on, Holy Spirit. Satan, let that hear. God loves us unconditionally. God sees us. God knows our name. Jesus called Mary's name, but that's because Jesus wanted us to know that God knows ours too. And loves us so we can love ourselves too. Lord Jesus. You can't love folk for real. If you don't love you. Jesus' assumption when he said love your neighbor as yourself that you loved yourself first. But in 2024, it's a bunch of us running around here who do not love ourselves. Who look in the mirror every day and see more wrong with ourselves than we see right. Who in ourselves wonder how God could love somebody like me. But don't you know? God doesn't see what we see. God sees this creation that's fearfully and wonderfully made. And you got to learn how to love that person. Because until we do, our, our love for anybody else is suspect. Suspect. God is the source of love. And our ability to love others and ourselves is connected to our relationship with God. Yeah. Just like the circle, God's love is continuous. And it flows from him to Jesus, Jesus to us, through us to God and ourselves and others. It's, it, it's a constant flow. Yeah. Our very ability to love comes from God's love for us. That's why no matter how difficult people are, loving them cannot be an option. Yes, yes, There's yes. a lot going on in our country, and it's easy to catch on, catch on to the bandwagon of hate that is riding. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. But we can't say we're Christian and not love. We can't say we love God and not love others, even those who are difficult to love. Not if we are in Christ. Most states are, folks are hateful because they need love. Hurt people do what? Uh-huh, we know that, amen. Bishop spoke of a preacher who had uh, passed away recently. And I won't call names, I, I just want to say what he said. Uh, she could often be abrasive and spoke her mind without a filter. And he asked if we thought that we had treated her with the love that Christ required. And my answer was unequivocally, no. For we are often careless with the hearts of those we have not forgiven. Those who we dismiss as bothersome. Get somebody in your mind because you know we all got somebody. Amen. 
those who are on the margins of life and in the margins of our lives, some folk who suffer mentally. We don't show them Jesus' love. We tolerate their presence. Amen, somebody. Amen. <laughs> we must repent and do better. For what do we have we've not been given? Anybody got something you weren't given? I don't think I'll see a hand. Amen. And so since we've been given it, how do we get the most? How do we get to treat somebody like they're less than us? How do we get to look down on somebody unless we're picking them up? How do we get to decide to withhold love from anybody? Grace and love are intertwined. And they both come from the same source. God is that source. Yes, yes. It's a circle of love. Not only is God the source of our love, God gives us the expression of God's love. God's love is expressed through Jesus' life, death, and resurrection. Amen? Amen. Jesus is God's expression of love. Like a brush stroke on the canvas, just as an artist uses a brush to convey their vision, God uses Jesus to convey his love to humanity. The life, teachings, death, and resurrection of Jesus are the vibrant colors of God's love painted across the canvas of human history. Through Jesus, we see the depth, the width, the height of God's love, and we're invited to step into the masterpiece of his grace. Grace that is love in action. We struggle with grace, church. In my mind's eye right now, I can see something. I won't call it, but we struggle with grace. We struggle with giving grace. None of us struggle with receiving it. Amen. 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 We want grace. Yes. We can sing amazing grace and every hand goes in the air. Oh, yeah. Because we know if we got what we deserved. Yeah. Amen. Yeah. But grace yes. is the embodiment of love. Yeah. It's easy to fuss and complain. It's easy to point fingers of blame. It's easy to look for each fault, but love covers a multitude of sin. And grace is the conduit. Grace is, is that which, which pushes love through. When I choose to show you grace, it's an act of love. It's a reflection of God's love for us. John 1 16 through 17 declares, for from his fullness we have all received grace upon grace. For the law was given through Moses, grace and truth came through Jesus Christ. Don't stay on that law and miss that grace. Are we living in cheap grace? I pray not. However, Grace is afforded to us. Yes. And when we push people to live by the law and the law alone without grace, yes. that's why they don't feel love in our presence. Amen? Amen. Amen. For grace, grace. is imperative yes. for relationship. Yes. Jesus is a tangible expression of God's love. Revealing the character and nature of God in a way that we can understand and relate to. Just like that brush stroke, Jesus conveys God's love to us. For when we were yet sinners, Christ died for us according to the scripture. And he rose from the grave according to the scripture. Jesus' fulfillment of the promise is tied up in the depth of God's love. And it's expressed from birth to resurrection. For God so loved the world that he gave his only begotten son. And no greater love 
has anyone than this, than to lay down his life for a friend. Jesus is the God's ultimate expression of love that connects God to humankind in the circle of love. If you came for Howler today, I'm going to disappoint you. I want us to be very clear that love is more important than our shout. Amen. 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 So our last point today is the command to love. We are commanded to love one another. And for some of us, love looks funny. Amen. We say we love, but we love while we hurt. And God wants to help us today know that the command to love is to love like God loves. Ready to forgive. Ready to restore. Ready. Ready to reconcile. God's love is like a river. Flowing constantly and unconditionally. We can't stop it. We can't contain it. And we can't earn it. We can only surrender to its current and let it carry, let it carry us along. And because God's love is ever flowing, as we receive it, we must share it. For our love for others is the overflow of God's love to us. Yeah. We can't want to overflow of God's love to just sit it in escrow like we sitting over here. Let's sit over here and wait till we need some more love. God gives us love as an ever flowing gift, so that when God gives us more than we need for the moment, we give it to someone else. Yeah. For our love for others is not a suggestion. It's not a suggestion, but a fundamental aspect of our faith. And Jesus declared that those who don't love others don't really love God. I didn't say it, Jesus did. Amen. If you don't love others, you don't love God. And if you love God, you will love others. How can we say we love the Lord whom we've never seen before and fail to love the ones we walk beside every single day? We struggle to love because sometimes folks aren't lovable. Sometimes that's us. Amen. You know when you have an unlovable day. Amen. When you in your feelings, stuck in your way, by the time you figure out that you've been acting a fool all day, you're grateful that somebody even cares enough to care. Amen. 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 We live in a time when love is so shallow. Love in this culture is just a feeling, and it's fleeting. Mm -hmm. I find it amazing that there are all of these shows about love at first sight and marriage at first sight and 90 day, listen here. <laughs> Ain't none of that love. No. Amen. Amen. None of it. Yes. None of it's love. Bachelor, bachelorette, none of it's love. Because when they are up against it, when the things that happen in life come their way, they abandon. That union. Yes. Why? Because they don't have the stuff love is made of. Yes. Love is unconditional. Real love. Yes. It takes a lick and it keeps on ticking. That, that, that's real love. Yes. Hmm. And most of the love we see in this time is transactional. It's kind of Janet Jackson, what have you done for me lately? And if lately doesn't seem enough, then we say, well, I, 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 you know, I, I love you, but I'm not in love with you anymore. What does that mean? <laughs> 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 
Part of the problem, as my brother would say, we keep falling in love and falling is an accident. <laughs> We gotta check ourselves. And even when it's difficult to love folks, we gotta show love anyhow. And, and you can't show me what you are unable to choose to feel. Because love is a choice. How many folks been married more than 10 years in here? That's most of y'all who married, amen, that's why I said. <laughs> You got to choose to love every single day. Because there are always going to be days where abandonment is in the perfect. Like, how do I get up out of this? But then God's love comes back to you and reminds you why you're together in the first place. And love transcends the And I know that didn't happen for all of us. There are those of us who are in this, in this room right now who wish it had happened that way, but it didn't. But that's okay. But we have examples before us of what it takes to hold that thing together. We, we must choose love. Jesus commanded us to love, not just God, not just love the Lord your God with all your heart, just all your strength. That was the law. Yes. Amen? Amen? That was the law. But Jesus added another commandment. He said, love your neighbor as you love yourself. Well, as we close, what, what does this circle of love really look like? Let me leave you with this story. Great great grandmother Ella had made a beautiful quilt. Y'all know quilting is part of the, the arts of our culture. Stitching together pieces of fabric from her family history. There were scraps from her grandmother's wedding dress, her father's favorite shirt, and her own children's baby blankets. Each pack represented a loved one. And the quilt was a testament to the love that had been passed down through the generations. When Ella's great granddaughter Jasmine asked about the quilt, Ella said, this is a quilt that's like our family's love. It's made up of many pieces, but together it's warm, yeah. it's strong, yeah. and it's beautiful. Yeah. Just like our love for each other has been passed down from one generation to the next. Jasmine felt the love and connection as she snuggled under the quilt. She realized that the love of her family, that her family shared was like the quilt. It was made up of so many small acts of kindness, of forgiveness, of support, and stitched together by God's love. Quilting is a part of the fabric of our lives as African Americans. And sometimes quilting was the place where folks work stuff out. Yes. Amen? Amen. So that they can go back and love again. Yes. As they looked at those pieces of, 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 of fabric and they remembered the stories attached to them, they found a place to love again. Amen. Well, church, in the same way, when we love one another, we're adding and connecting patches to the quilt of God's love. And sometimes when it's difficult, we got to go back and get a piece yeah. of the fabric. We got to look at it. We got to remember what it meant for us, how it lifted us, how it showed us love, how it made us feel warm. And then we got to share God's love some more. We got to share with others and warming hearts, strengthening relationships, and creating a beautiful tapestry of love that will endure. It's a circle of love. God is our source. It is the foundation for loving others and also ourselves. It is the circle of love. We must receive and show love. The love of God is part of this circle. Don't you know you can't get the benefits of the circle without being a part of it? <laughs> we can't just get ready to love. Anybody remember jumping rope? Oh, yeah. Amen. Oh, yeah. The 
rope and start going, right? And you had to get into the rhythm of the rope before you could jump in so that you could jump. It's the same way with love. You got to get into the rhythm of what it means for God to love to us through Jesus who loves us and us to love one another. You got to get into that rhythm and then you got to jump in and keep on jumping. It's a choice. God chose Jesus, chose, and so must we. Not out of obligation, but because Jesus loved us first. Or because Jesus loved us first, but because we want to please God and walk in his way. And to do that, love is a requirement. It's not transactional, it's relational. It is out of love that God sent Jesus, out of love that Jesus gave his life. And it's out of love that we must show love to one another. For they'll know we are Christians. By our love, not by our words, not by our focus on the rules and regulations, not on our churchy judgment, but by our love. We must embrace God's love and then transmit that love to others. It's a circle. And may the circle be unbroken. Will you choose love today? Will you embrace that God loves you? I heard Elder Mitchell say yesterday, he said that no matter whatever happened in his life, no matter what mistakes he ever made, no matter what things he went through that were struggles and were hard, he said that when he could get by himself and hear himself as a little boy singing, yes, Jesus loves me. enough for him to hang on. To know that Jesus loves you makes it easier for you to choose to love someone else. We can do it starting here and starting now. Push the refresh button on your love. Let the resurrection power of Jesus, let uh, love rise up in us I told you there'd be no hunger this morning. But there is hope. Amen. There's hope that love will be activated afresh in our hearts. So I'm going to ask you to do something that we normally don't do. I'm going to ask those who are in the back to come to this middle area right here where it's open. And I want you to help us to form a circle of love. Because we're going to love on one another today. Amen. If we don't do it on another day, that means everybody up who can, and those of you who are seated, make sure you're seated in the circle. I need you. You need me. Now as we're coming, this is the time for decision making. If you really need the love of Christ, then you've got to come to Jesus just as you are, knowing that there is love in Christ Jesus. And that there is never a time when you are unloved. Let's fill in, let's fill in.
Stretch your arms out. Yes. There we go. Hallelujah. For the Amos, I'm going to ask that you come and just touch the arm of, of Sister Merlin because she's got the children and the child is asleep. And y'all just reach your arm out toward the circle. And it's look beautiful. If you're at home online, there's someone online right now, if you're on YouTube, who's ready to pray for you as you are there. Amen. Amen. And if someone is sitting on Facebook, will you do the same? Heads bowed, eyes closed. Begin to open your mouth and just pray for yourself, for others, and for your love for God. Just begin to pray. Just open your mouth and pray. Doesn't matter what you say, you're talking to God. short help us to be forgiving to 
show one another grace. To do our best to understand one another and to reach beyond what we want. And consider the needs of each, of each other. Lord, we love you. We give you praise. And as we yet touch, we are agreeing right now, God, that your love is filling our hearts as we uh, remember your love for Christ and Christ's love for us. So now, God, we vow to love each other better. In the name of Jesus. And as we get ready to leave this place today, Lord, we ask that you would bless us. That you would keep us. That you would make your face to shine upon us. That you would be gracious unto us. And while you're helping us to love one another better, Lord, give us peace in the process. Give us shalom, shalom, shalom as only you can. And may our love cover, may grace abound. And when the enemy comes like a flood, Lord, lift a standard of love up against it. So that we can love you, love others, and ourselves. Is our prayer in Jesus' name? And we all said, Amen. 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 And amen. amen. We're going to leave with I pray for you, you pray for me. Come on. Tell the person next to you.